Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way. It's Thursday, September the 1st. It's transfer deadline day. It's the Celtic Way morning briefing live with myself, Tony Haggerty, a Haggerty 10 Twitter handle. And I'm joined as always by Sean Martin at Sean Martin TCW Twitter handle. Good morning, Sean. How are you? Morning, Tony. All good yourself? Yes, all good. Just, you're back from Dingwall hours ago, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. The show must go on, as they say. But first and foremost, just draw your attention to our new sponsor, Football Prizes, and you can win. Look at that online now. Alila Bada, stunning signed frame Celtic shirt for just three ninety five. You enter the links in the description, and you can win a Lila Bada signed shirt. And there's also two instant prizes. You can even win a Kyogo signed Celtic shirt or a £25 gift voucher for the club shop. You know what to do, get entering into that, guys. It's uh, You can win a Lila Bada signed shirt or a Kyogo signed shirt. Wonderful prizes there, Sean, are they not? They certainly are, yep. Yeah. And also along the bottom, I've always got a deal for you. You know the script by now. Uh, £1 for two months of full access. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and join us www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe and you can get access to the pods but and also access to everything that's on the website we've got big yeah. interviews we've got stats and data analysis we've got transfer roundups we've got all sorts of stuff there scouting of players it's wonderful there's something there for everybody of a celtic nature log on to the website www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe sean dingwall <laughs> Nine changes there were. There were, aye. A wee bit more mm-hmm. than what we predicted as Beach Boys <laughs> has already come in and called us out for. Beach Boys has just made a Reggie Blinker with our, um, <laughs> with our predicted 11. 7 and 8 out of 10, uh, 11, sorry. I, I don't think it was that bad when I, when I seen the lineup, but um, aye, fair enough. You've got the players there, as I said on uh, on Tuesday. Uh, when the commenter came in saying make seven changes, I just says I didn't think you would, but you could feasibly. <laughs> Yeah, he could feasibly have done it. He obviously went two more than that and went nine changes, but it's a strong team anyway. I I, I don't really care who was in the team. The minute I saw that Aaron Moy was playing, I was just like, yeah. Result. <laughs> and he also played very well. But Sean, I thought last night was clinical, professional, and a brilliant all round team performance. They didn't look like they were struggling at any point in that in that game. Even mm-hmm. when it went to two one, you know, within five minutes they'd gone three one and. You know, some of the stuff they played at times was, was very good. I'd agree with that. And with a couple of comments, Retro Celtic, I'll not put it up um, because I can't find it now, but there was, um, he, he was just saying who um, who was who was a wee bit scared when it went 2-1, just in case maybe yes. places of an old Celtic side might have come up, but it really didn't. It was just, all right, we've conceded, right, OK, back to the back to the day job of getting up and scoring another couple, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, so I think I think that shouldn't go overlooked. But in general, I'd agree with you. I think rather than individual standouts, there were a couple. I thought McGregor had a really good game. I thought Aaron Moy played very well in his first start. Um, Yakimakis, Ralston. I, but the fact that I'm even saying that means that I agree with you. I think it was an overall team performance, which is arguably the biggest compliment you can give them, considering there was nine changes. Yeah, and I thought Welsh was excellent as well last Welsh night. Welsh was. Uh, it was a pity to see him going off injured. Yeah, actually. yeah. You know, so I, you know, going through the team, Seagrease looked pretty comfortable as well. Put you know, off a good save, I had to do, yeah. You know, so I was, you know, was, there were so many things. Moy, I thought, was involved. McGregor just, you know, and, and also Turnbull. I thought Turnbull, Turnbull was excellent. Game, you know, mm-hmm. Turnbull was really good. And just, we spoke about the behaviour stuff, but it, it's the quick thinking. It's the intelligence that a lot of the players now have when they're on the park. Mm-hmm. Well, the quick thinking for the corner leads to the first goal. You know, he, McGregor runs and he sees him. And, you know, it reminded me of, remember, the free kick they took when the dummy mm-hmm. when Tom Rogic scored? Yep. Just catching people off guard. And that's what you do. I mean, they, they, try, that, they try that multiple times a game now. Um, that that kind of mentality of taking it either quick or getting the ball, getting it back, whether it's a throw in or a corner or whatever. Um, most teams have kind of started switching on. that They need to be more switched on as soon as yeah. Celtic win a corner, get into your positions. County weren't, I, would, I wouldn't say they were massively slow at getting into the positions for that corner, yeah. but Celtic were just fast enough and switched yeah. on enough that it was just that split second too fast for them. And it was a it was a good ball at the right height for McGregor for what he was trying to yeah. do. 
McGregor, I know it took a deflection, but he's still connected well enough with it for the yeah. for the, the actual it's still it. Yeah. Um there's a uh, Brian Roberts here want to Go say back. a new phrase for you, Tony. It's now no slowing, fast flowing, always scoring Celtic. Well, that's that's fair enough. That's uh up there with the rip rolling, free scoring, never boring indeed. indeed. <laughs> uh, um, cheers, Brian, that, for that. I think Opening 10 minutes, Tony, I, I had kind of jotted down. There was a lot of long balls in the opening 10 minutes. More mm. more long balls than I think uh, you should be expecting from Celtic. But sometimes that's going to happen uh, with, with the flow of the game. I think they settled into it after that and settled into it really well. Started playing some really yeah. good stuff, some really good ground passes, some really good interplay. Uh, you mentioned Stephen Welsh. I, I, I want to mention him as well. He was back at right centre-back and you know I've got that thing about what Satan <laughs> playing on and all that kind of stuff. It was good to see him back at right centre back because he's largely just played left centre back because usually it's Carter Vickers that he's, he's playing with. Um, so it was an interesting one. I like him there. I think yep. you can still tell that it's his more natural side when he's playing at the back. Um, he had the same type of freedom to carry the ball right through the basically yeah, yeah. The freedom right through the middle to the, the middle half space that um, that Carter Vickers had the last time up at Dingwall a few weeks yeah. ago, and I think he did that really well. I thought so too. I mean, the first his yeah. first involvement, he crashes a header off the bar. Really unlucky, but I thought that he was breaking the lines and moving forward. And his link up play was really excellent at times. I thought, mm-hmm. and and done that as well. He looked very comfortable beside Morris Jens, and Jens looked really comfortable beside him. And mm-hmm. it was Jens's pass forward that led to the the cue yeah, back and layoff, yeah. and then Yakimakis scoring. Sean, no happy. Yakimakis took he three touches. touches. Nah. Shocking. He's lost he's, it. He's slacking. Had it, lost it, not getting it back. <laughs> uh, Jason, Jason Lee drawing attention to Anthony Ralston's, frankly, brilliant, audacious, yeah. superb uh, flicked assist for that. Yes. And I know that Yakimaki yeah, still had a couple of things to do to get himself that space, but it was a, a brilliant wee oh, flick for Anthony Ralston. Considered first start of the season, by the way, for him, two assists and... He just didn't look as if he, he looked, didn't look as if he'd not yeah. been playing, which is um, which is a, a nod to the training sessions, I suppose that that Andrew's always talking about. But made the I point. He was a great game. He was enjoying his night, wasn't he? Yeah. That you know, people ask, how do you keep these players happy? Winning football matches keeps you happy. Mm. And I also wanted to talk about Dyson Maida's lightning quick reactions to the goalkeeper spilling that shot. I mean, mm-hmm. it was. And then in the aftermath of that, I don't know if you noticed because it caught it lovely on TV. Jackamacus celebration when it went to 3 1 for Maida's goal. Mm-hmm. You would have thought Jackamacus had scored it himself. <laughs> he was like, yes. And, <laughs> and these, these are things, behaviours that we speak about that I like to see. You know, he was really chuffed because it was a, as you said, 2 1, the game could arguably be in the balance, but it was five minutes between those two goals. Yeah. And I think Jackamacus was like, well, that's it. That's the game done and dusted. And he was chuffed and he kind of showed that. But you just love to see that. But I thought, Thought Maida, I mean, he was. I mean, that was the goalkeepers. It was still within the goalkeeper's grasp and range to to gather it at the second attempt, but he was on it in a flash. Ah, it's a good, good kind of poacher's instinct, and helps when you're that quick in general as well. But <laughs> uh, he showed that pace a couple of times last night. He did. Um, he did. And but, I thought, uh, I, I thought, I thought he did a good game. I thought, I, again, I don't think anybody never. I think I, I you've thought, got you've got to acknowledge that the concession was was sloppy on yeah. several yeah. attempts. Uh, I think it's essentially like a keeper's long ball. That's all it was. It was a basic hump, uh, lump it up the park. They can see it for ages. So neither Ante Ralston, who's behind Jordan White, or nor Carol Starfield in front of him were very assertive and in, in kind of trying to win it, trying to pick him up. He gets that knockdown, and then there should be no danger from that knockdown. But unfortunately, Moritz Jens has lost his man, and Jakovitis get essentially a tap in. It's sloppy to concede. Uh, yep. did, it ma- did it matter in the end? No. Nope. Uh, save for spoiling your correct score prediction. But <laughs> um, but nonetheless, it was a sloppy concession. But as we said at the start, uh, when I, I mentioned Retro Celtic's comment, the best way to look at it, the silver lining to look at it, was there was no edginess after it. They'd just no. get back to what they were doing. It never yeah. rattled them at all. And uh, that's not something you could always say about a Celtic team that concedes when they're 2-0 two, two up. Uh, yeah. So I... I I will take the silver lining from it, even though the goal itself was sloppy. Another thing that impressed me, Sean, was the delivery from wide areas last night. I thought it was bang on the money. Celtic created yeah. a lot of chances, uh, Tumble in particular, and even my Dyson Maida put in a couple of... And then when Haksabanovic came on, first thing he did... Well, come, well, come to him, I liked him. I, I across him. the face, you know. So I just thought that 
from those wide areas and the channels that we spoke about it yesterday. Mm-hmm. It is clearly repetition they're doing at training. Because yeah, they're, yeah. they're honing that and it is now becoming I mean, Jack Mac has had a couple of headers that were mm-hmm. off target, but he was getting there because he knows the ball was coming. And then there was one where Ralston went down the wing and we've spoke about all the time. He fired it into that area. Yeah, it was yeah. cleared, but he was firing and known thing well and, and Jack Marcus was like inches away from getting to it before the county defender. And I kind of smiled at that because I was thinking, all right, yeah. That's the, uh, that's the, this, I was pleased to see the, sec, the second unit that I keep going on about. Yeah. And I know I, I don't mean it as an actual second unit, but Abada, Ralston and Yakimakis all starting together. I like that. Um, yeah. I like that trio. All right, Abada. Abada wasn't, I don't think it was poor, but it was obviously never never scored or anything. But uh, Ralston and Yakimakis both I thought were, were standouts. Yeah. So I know I said at the start there wasn't a standout, but regardless. And Aaron Moy, I thought, yep. was composed. To be fair, Kevin Ferrer saying Moy was great last night. Yeah, there a lot of people his passing was great. Yeah, I think his passing was great because he, he just seemed to make it look all so simple and, and very easy. And just, you know, he, he, mm-hmm. he had a grip in the midfield. Him and McGregor, I thought. But never ever, um, no time did the game get away from any of the two of them. No, I think Moy was he showed a wee bit, a wee bit more of a risky side to his passing, probably mm-hmm. because he started rather than coming on in a situation yeah. where you're seeing out a game. Uh, I thought he played well again. I thought everybody played well. That goal concession is the only thing really. Yeah, uh, aside, I thought Alexandro Bernabe was uh, he'd, he'd a slow start to the game. Uh, he'd a couple of sloppy passes, but alternatively. Going forward, he looked yeah, a yeah. live wire. He looked, he looked. He put in a couple of dangerous balls, put in a couple of poor balls as well. I thought there was plenty to work with with his performance. Um, the raw ingredients oh, are there. I said in the man, yeah, man show, yeah, yeah. Uh, the raw materials there. So yeah, as long as we um, don't talk about his attempted shot in the first half, but aye, yeah, aye. nearly disappeared up his trouser leg. I think at some point, but yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> apart from that, there's also a lot of love for um, a certain debutant. Sead Hak Sabanovic last night. He only got 15 minutes, Tory, but he made the most of those 15 minutes because he was dangerous in those 15. He was, he, I yeah, thought, he looked yeah. really good. You don't want to get ahead of yourself with yeah. different situations that people come on in to make their debut, but he came on absolutely itching to make an impact, and I think and he, he left a good impression. He did. I think a lot of the Celtic supporters were left wanting more mm. of Hak Sabanovic and, and were very pleased. And you know, you say 15 minutes, but he impressed. So, yeah, did. Mark Donner there. Haksavanovic looks a player, he does indeed. And so we'll see how that one pans out. But yeah, he'll probably feature more prominently as the weeks and months move ahead. But uh, as first impressions go, Sean, he left a, a lasting one, didn't he, last night in Dingwall? He did. Um, and I mean, he's going to be in the squads anyway. You don't sign yeah. a player like that and he's not in the squads. But I don't expect him to start on Saturday, but no. I don't know him out coming on and doing something <laughs> yeah. because that's that's exactly the type of it wasn't a I mean I done an instant reaction thing on the on the website, I'll put a link up to it. And it isn't it wasn't a scientific thing, it was just my yeah. own perception yeah. of his, his, his kind of first appearance. Yeah. And I was I was genuinely impressed because it's not sometimes it's easy to come on and make an impression in a situation like that when you've just gone three one up and there, it was never really in doubt that game. Yeah. So you really need to make a, a, a an effort to make an impact, if you know what I mean, to stand out in that situation. Yeah. And I felt like you did because the very first thing you did was he was past the ball near the halfway line. And the easy ball is obviously to give it back to who you, you got it from or to give it to your fullback who's just there and was free. Yeah. But he immediately looked. He never played it because there wasn't a pass on and even that in itself was a benefit because he saw there wasn't a pass on, but he looked for it. Yeah. He immediately looked for the forward bit, gave it back to, I think it was Burnaby at that point, and then the next time he got the ball, he looked up and there was a chance to, to play the kind of one-two after he took on someone, beat them, very tight space, and then played a one-two and then played through, I think it was Forrest at that point. Mm. So from there on, he was just when Basically, that 15 minutes, I said, he made, he made the county players exceedingly yeah. uncomfortable <laughs> for that 15 minutes that he was on. So and you don't get ahead of yourself, but he made a good impression. Yeah, he did indeed. Motherwell now lying wait, Sean, in the quarter-final. Yep. Part, uh, Celtic looking to book a semi-final place at Hamden. Mother will stand in their way, so another away tie, as Ange duly noted. Yep, it and was yeah. uh, 18th, 19th or 20th October, and I don't think they've have they announced it. I don't no, remember them announcing it. Yeah. Ralston Dino was impressive. Hacker going to be a player exciting time, says Helen Fix. Hope you're enjoying it, Helen. Yep, Ralston absolutely strolled it last night. He did indeed. Yeah, I mean, they, 
they all look very comfortable, Sean, don't they? Yeah, uh, Jason Lee drawing attention to your uh, Yakimakis. Yeah, yeah, uh, just it's, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's a joy to watch, and it's good to see that they're all in this together, you mm-hmm. know. And I think someone has said that, yeah, sterner tests will come. Of so, course, so, of so course, but very and it's, it's, it's what five, six games into the season, so I can't say this really already because it's it's at the tail end of the season that I was using this phrase a lot. Um, because the running and the pressure fill, pressure filled running, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But when you've got two big games, two bigger games coming in quick succession against better teams, can I? And I again, I used this phrase at the tail end of the last season to make the routine stay routine is massive for yeah. a team like Celtic. Um, cool. And that's that's what they did last night. And I'd argue even went one better because it was a it was more than just routine. It was nine changes and still. Putting in a really dominant display. Fantastic so. as ever, yeah. And speaking of players, Sean, there might be more movement. And yes. Uh, say there would be, could be some transfers, ins and outs. It's mm-hmm. transfer deadline do, folks, so I urge you to keep your eyes on the website. We'll be updating all day up until midnight tonight. We'll keep you in touch of anything that's happening with regards to Celtic. But a name that was mentioned, Sean, was Oliver Abelgard. Yep. From Ruben Kazan and Ange Postacoglu <laughs> cheekily said he was asked if it was a name that was familiar to him and he said, well, he's certainly a name, which is <laughs> all, I burst out laughing at. And uh, he kind of hinted that mm, there could be something happening. Mikey Johnston also on the move, mm-hmm. Sean. Following uh, yep, the right. rules of uh, Albina Jetty uh, leaving mm-hmm. yesterday as well for season-long loan. So Celtic kind of getting the players that are surplus to requirements out the door mm-hmm. on loan or permanent deals elsewhere and getting in maybe another one, Sean, maybe with Oliver Abelgaard possibly arriving. Potentially, yeah. Um, there's there's a, been a lot of, to be honest, whether he signs or not, I think this window has been Terrific. everything that you could have wanted, really. Yeah. Uh, and I think the credit for that obviously goes to the scouting department and Ange for Ange Postacoglu's role as well, but for Michael Nixon to sign off on it all as well. Yes. Um, because that's January and the summer back to back windows that have been superb, basically. Yeah. Um, so credit to him for that. But also, um, as I say, that that doesn't hinge on Oliver Abogard signing. I know I still think no, it's no. Been a, a remarkable window. Uh, and that also goes for the outs as well as the ins. I think um, cutting a lot of the fringe players, whether it was on loan with options to buy or just on loan, or for instance, giving Mikey Johnston, which we understand is going to happen, a loan move to get more game time. Uh, yeah. I think it's all been positive moves. Of course. And uh, he was he was bullish last night about the chances of Celtic maybe doing something. You know, he was kind of like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. watch this space. And you know something's going to happen. So whether that be Abdulgard or someone else, it remains to be seen. But certainly heavy links with Abdulgard, Sean, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Um, a couple of people commenting saying he, he looks as if uh, Brian O'Neill saying great last signing uh, if they get the defensive midfield yeah. they need. Uh, AJSC AJ, Tech saying, where does Abogar fit in and see the guy to help liberate Callum uh, McGregor and move him up the pitch? I like that word, liberate. Um, yes. I, well, strictly speaking, and I'll, I will come on because I've kind of got a couple of stats about Abogar, but Aaron Moy can already do that if, yes. if you want to do that because he started there last night, allowed did it last a, night a wee bit. And then also when James McCarthy came on, Aaron Moy didn't go off. He moved up on himself, which comes back to that thing I'd say is at the start where like who does he replace? Nobody, but everybody at the same yeah, time. Yeah. He can play both, he can rotate round, he can play in a double pivot, he can play in an eight, he can play as a six, all that kind of stuff. So there's there's that. But uh, from Oliver Abelgard in general, just specifically, um, He's uh, 26, moved yeah. to Ruben Kazan 2019-20. Now, you know I like you do like how many minutes have they played at the top level, that kind of thing. So he's just under 11,000 minutes, which is equivalent to about 121 games at the top level. So that's like Russian top flight, um, Danish top flight, the Cups, that kind of thing. Uh, Europa Conference League, I can't remember. That kind of thing. Position-wise, 89% of his minutes at centre-mid. So he is a centre-mid, Tony. He's played some time at centre-back, some time on each flank, even up front once, but He's a centre mid. Um, he actually defensive centre like, mid. Sean. Well, see, aye, this is it, right? So he's six foot four, and yes, nominally he's a 
defensive midfielder, deep lying midfielder. But when he left Alborg for Ruben Kazan, his coach at Alborg basically said that we're well covered at the eight. So he obviously played him at the eight as well. Yeah. So if he's got that in him, then then that's all. That's no versatility. What I keep saying, yeah, because as I keep saying, you can't really just come into Celtic as a just a defensive midfielder. Yes. You need to be able to not necessarily move to the eight, but you need to be able to have that technical quality and stuff. Because if you're just a spoiler, you'll get lost. All that kind of stuff. You know, you know what I'm going about with it. So statistically, I kind of had a look at him just again on the kind of top level minutes that he's played. So half his passes are long passes, but that could be down to team style. And it's not it's not the end of the world because Cal McGregor, even though he, he keeps it simple a lot of the time, and like something like forty two percent of his passes are actually characterised as long passes. I wouldn't have thought that. I wouldn't say that they're all long <laughs> passes like that. So his was about forty nine percent. So it doesn't worry me that much. And there's team style. He'll play a lot more short passes itself. That's just a given. Yeah. Um, what I would say is but 80% accuracy for a deep line midfielder is pretty low. Um, so whether that suggests that he takes risks with his passes from deep or whether it, it's something to think about, we'll see when, when I kind of look at the yeah. video stuff. Yeah. Um, McGregor, for instance, last season, even though he was playing single pivot, was 90% and near beat on when he played was 91%. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's something to look at, whether it's because he takes risky well, passes or whether it's, it's something to actually be concerned about. I'll see when I look at the video stuff and when we see him in person. But um, you asked about defensive stuff. So his duels, um, wins 59% overall, which is about Beton's level. So right. fair enough, it's 10% more than McGregor was last year. So that's fair enough. That kind of suggests I defensively can do it. He's six foot four, as I said, 65% of his aerial mm-hmm. duels, which is worse, Tony, than Beton. But it's still equated to like six headers, one per 90 minutes. So... And that was more than double, so I think you're looking at somebody that can that can win a ball in the air as well, if need be, which might be needed in, uh, in Scotland, I would suggest. Indeed, yes, indeed, Sean. Now, are you worried about losing anybody, Sean, when I'm talking about... No, nah, I don't think assets? so. No, nah, I don't think so, no. Um, maybe if our English team panics and wants to throw money, then maybe somebody like O'Reilly could, could, could come in for interest, but no, I don't think so. It's too late in the window. And the club's in too good a position to let somebody go at this point. I wrote the other week, Sean, that Ange was in the construction business, not deconstruction business. And I stand by that. I don't think any of Celtic's star players will, will leave tonight or in, or in January for that matter. So it's just, yep. that, just the way I think the club are going about their business at this minute in time. Aye, I think you're talking maybe maybe a couple of the French players, maybe a couple of younger players and Mikey Johnston, really. Uh, Hearts have reported the Edinburgh Evening News reported this morning that Hearts have asked about Mikey Johnston, uh, but I think the front runners are still uh, Victoria, Victoria and, um, yeah. yep, Portuguese, and, uh, League. Portuguese League. So we'll see. It depends. The, would you rather he stayed in Scotland? Would you rather he just got to a team that, that's going to play him week in week out? That, I suppose that's that's the questions for him. But I do think that that loan move should have happened in January and would have happened if it wasn't yeah. for the fact that Jota was still coming back from uh, from an injury because I, I did think that it made sense at that point for Mikey Johnston to go and get game time the last half of the latter half of the season. Um, it didn't happen and that primarily was because of Jota's injury. <laughs> nice shot. Having watched Celtic make nine changes last night and we accept that Celtic manager accepts that he doesn't have a preferred start in 11. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what happened on Saturday? <laughs> Talk about that tomorrow, Tony. That's, that's going to be some some task, but <laughs> uh, I suppose you ask you ask yourself the question, did anybody play themselves into the, the team last night? And you could argue there were several that have certainly not ruled themselves out. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I, I've got my thoughts on, for instance, the front three. Um, I think anybody that's li- that listens regularly will know what my midfield three is going to be so I, I it's, it's interesting it's interesting I, I kind of know what my team's going to be um I think but we'll talk about it tomorrow we'll talk yeah, about it tomorrow uh, a couple of a couple of added comments coming yeah. in um where was it Tim Anon about potentially signing Oliver Abelgard uh, yes. Celtic to go two pivots and a 10 could argue Moy and McGregor is two pivots and, and could allow you to do mm-hmm. that as well already um but definitely, yeah, a player of his out, of Abelgard's out, would do that. And an additional statistic for you, Tony. Um, I've talked about his six foot four and he wins, uh, wins balls in the air, all that kind of stuff. He's passing, all that kind of stuff. But 
the actual standout thing was his interceptions. He makes right. nearly eight per game. And all right, some of that will be to do with the kind of teams that he's playing with. But just for context, McGregor last year made just under four and Beaton made five. So the potential is there. Um, that that's the kind of thing he'll be doing. Because a lot of the time, as I say, it's not a spoiler you need in that position. It's somebody that, that, that's intelligent, that can intercept. Yeah. Because a lot of the time, Celtic are swarming to, to win the ball back. They're not just relying on somebody to take somebody out of the game. That kind of thing, it's, uh, it's swarming. So I, I don't know. I think it's uh, I think it makes sense, but it's, we'll see if it comes to pass. It's certainly the box that a lot of supporters wanted to touch on mm-hmm. with that. Uh, uh, for want of a better expression, a defensive central midfielder or somebody that can play that that kind of role, as you rightly pointed out, he can do other things. But I, I think, uh, as you say, that as a transfer window goes, it's been one of the most successful for Celtic yep. because they've got, if Ab- Abogad comes in, then they will have uh, filled all the holes that Ange Postacoglu said in the areas that they needed filled. So uh, I would be very happy if, if that happens today. I think a lot of Celtic supporters would be happy about that, wouldn't they? I think so. I and I, as I say, even if they don't bring somebody else in, and it's just Mikey Johnson getting out yeah. on loan, I, I think this window has been brilliant. I think it's been a brilliant window. Yeah. Say they was excited for it at the start of the summer. Um, even if in the back of my mind I thought there's a potential that maybe they only get one of Jota or Carter Vickers, so to get yeah. both and then add the level of of player that they have to both starting options like Haksabanovic and stuff. And both the squad options like Seagrist, I think it's in Moy. Obviously, I think I think it's uh, I think it's been a really really good window. Jason Lee, when Celtic press, they look like orcas hunting baby seals. There you go. I like that. You like that? What was like that? that. that I was going to say. I think, it's, I think running. <laughs> you've got what you've got like two three minutes to get a better comment than that into <laughs> the uh, comment of the day. I thought you were going to go with Beach Boys or two of us having a Reggie Blinker with regards to her. <laughs> I could have, I could have. Yeah, but yeah, really you like the uh, Helen Feek to me, it's been a brilliant transfer window. Yeah, I think the self supporters just, I think the kind of the joy and the happiness that this team under Ange has given the mm-hmm. Celtic supporters now speaks volumes. You know, last night there was three stands for Celtic supporters, Sean, and they were just, you know, incredible backing, and it's all there. It's a, it's a real. You talk about being on the same page, everyone singing from the same hymn sheet and all that, but this is a collective. Everybody mm-hmm. is in unison and they are winning games and that's keeping everybody happy, the management, the players, supporters. It's all augering very well, but with a caveat to stern test to come back to back with Rangers yeah. on Saturday, first Glasgow Derby of the season and first Champions League group stage match day one against Real Madrid doesn't come any better than that Sean no, it does in not, terms no. of things to look forward to but no. there's there's um, there's a comment here Tony that I was going to mention and I forgot all about it because we mo- we'd moved on from the game Big Red Tony Ralston just bumped that guy <laughs> out of the road for uh, James Forrest goal I had that in my notes from last night as well yeah. because the actual ball from Turnbull was slightly yeah. slightly um, beyond Ralston but he recognised that he was going to have to essentially win a tackle to win the ball and just bumped the guy out of the way, as Big Red says, won the ball and then pulled it back for Forrest too. I thought, I thought done all right when he came on Forrest. I know people will, will still maybe criticise him and stuff, yeah. but he scored his goal, took on a couple of players, he tried a couple of one-twos. I thought he'd done all right. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, yeah. What about a shout-out for James Forrest and his stats? Yeah, I think that was a 14th consecutive season that James Forrest has scored for Celtic, so... Yeah, closing in on the double century goals and assists yeah. as well. Um, as I say, and as I said last year, if you're expecting him to return to first 11, three games a week, James Forrest, then you will be criticising him as long as you're realistic with the expectations of maybe he's coming in every few weeks, maybe he's coming off the bench and doing stuff. He's a, obviously a, a popular and, and veteran player in the dressing room. As long yeah. as your expectations are realistic in this kind of thing, like coming in for a League Cup game, uh, coming on as a sub, scoring a goal, taking the armband, generally helping the team. If that's your expectations, I think you'll live up to them this season. I don't, I, I don't really, I didn't get the criticism. Sure. And the good news continues, Sean, because the viewers can still win a Celtic away top, can't they? Uh, they certainly can, I. Um, it ends today, though. It ends yeah. today, it ends later today. So this is your last chance. I'll put the link um, in the comments. 
basically it's the same as it always is you, you follow the link it'll take you to the tweet you make sure that's been retweeted you follow the celtic way account and that's you in the draw which will be later today what more could you want sean i mean it's you can win remember our new uh, sponsor football prizes online now you can win a lila bada signed and framed celtic shirt there's also two instant prizes you can also win a kyogo signed celtic shirt or a 25 pound gift voucher for the club shop just follow the link for 395 links in the description and also our comment of the day will be entered into that draw for free sean yep. i think you're going to go with the, the orca and baby seals aren't you i think that's your i'm going to go with that one i i'm going to go with that one um so jason lee if you, you message us on twitter or on the facebook or um email either myself or tony uh, then we'll get you your free ticket entry for this uh Leah Labada signed in, in frame shot. And while we're at it, Angelo Tyro's uh, winning comment yesterday, not heard from you, so you've still got yours to, to, to claim. Yep. And also running along the bottom on the strap line, you know what to do. Hit that button, a pound for two months of full access. Yep. To everything on the website and keep your eye on the website today. We'll be updating it constantly during transfer deadline day. But hit that subscribe button, guys, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Thank you to everybody for the comments. We roll on to Saturday. It's a big one and a bigger one on Tuesday, Sean. Certainly is, man. What what a couple of days. We'll see you again yeah. tomorrow, Tony. See you again tomorrow for Same time. the big preview. I know, yeah, the big previews. But looking forward to it. Celtic fans are smiling. Terrific Thursday, Sean. Yep. Here we go again. We never stop, as the manager says. Thanks for your contributions, guys. Love it. Uh, well done to our commenter of the day jason lee that tickled sean you like that <laughs> <laughs> sean as always first class stats man everything just a bundle of information tremendous stuff sean i really cheers, enjoy it. Tony, cheers guys take care of.